Okay, I want to go back to where this story began, which is Athens, Georgia, obviously. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you probably have differing stories, but what do you first remember about meeting each other for the first time? Oh, man. Go ahead. I feel like, it did, like there's totally different stories with this, but I remember the one I remember is when we met each other outside of movie theater. Mm -hmm. Is that what you remember? Yeah, pretty much. Um, we were there for two days for cheerleading, me and a bunch of girls, and then me and a bunch of cheerleaders, and then the football team was there. And I knew one of his roommates, friends, yep. roommates? Roommates. One of the players on the team went to my high school. Um, so he texted me, he was like, do you guys want to get a group together and go to the movies? We're like, yeah, great, sure. And that's the first time I laid eyes on this one. Yeah, that's about right. That's, uh, <laughs> that's how I remember it. I remember seeing, uh, talking to our buddy Fred that knows both of us, but knew her first, seeing a picture of her, you were with, one of your other one of your other buddies too, and I was like, "Who's that girl?" And he was like, "Oh, I know her." And so, we uh, we made it work. <laughs> so you picked her out. <laughs> I mean, I just was like, "She's cute." So I mean, it took a while after that for it really yeah. to be, you know, become something. But that's what I was gonna say. Was it love at first sight? <laughs> <laughs> I mean. I mean, we we liked each other, but you know, college. I was eighteen years, seventeen. Seventeen. Yeah, yeah so we were young. young. And I think the whole college experience, um, we made it work. We, yeah. It was a, definitely a college relationship what, for what that means to everybody. But yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I wouldn't say young. it was, no, it was not love at first sight. I loved him, <laughs> but it took a while, so. Yeah. I like how quiet he guys like, oh, yeah. it wasn't. <laughs> we were, no, I mean, like, I don't want to make it feel like, I mean, like, but I mean, yeah, I mean. We were young at that point. Yeah, it was a long time ago. It's we honestly really hard young. to remember back to. Well, it's interesting because you guys have, it feels like you've been together almost forever. Like it yes. seems like since the moment that you've laid eyes on each other, that's been the yeah. case. Um, but how would you describe the moment maybe you realized that I, I think this guy is, might be the one I want to spend the rest of my life with? Oh, I realized it pretty quickly. Um, now, again, we were in college and doing the whole college thing, um, but you know, when you first meet Matthew, I think anyone who meets Matthew, it's hard not to to love him or like him. Um, he's funny, he's humble, he was adorable. He was a little chunkier back in the day. Oh yeah. Um, which I loved, but it was truly hard. I mean, it, it, it's hard not to love him or like him. And I fell for him very quickly. Um, and, you know, here and there got, had some tears, had some laughs, but, um, it all made for you know the relationship we have today, mm -hmm. which I'm incredibly grateful for. So um, I would say I, I mean like I fell within those first couple months hard for him, and I mean it took how long? I don't know. Like a long time. Yeah, like a year and a half I'd say before we were officially <laughs> dating. So yeah, you can tell you, you know what happened. I know. This I know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Let's talk about uh, the years in Detroit. Mm -hmm. So obviously. Kelly's been your backbone from the very beginning. Yep. How would you describe the 12 years that you guys spent there together as a family and just that chapter of your life? Yeah, I mean, I feel like, I know for me personally and for us, I mean, we just grew up there kind of. You know, I mean, I was 20 when I left college, 21 when I first got drafted, um, spent my first year and a half or two years up there by myself, you know, doing long distance with her. And then when you moved up there, I feel like, you and I, and then eventually our family, you know, became what it is today, yeah. which is something I'm really proud of. And and um, we have so many good friends, so many good people that we met there that helped shape kind of who we are as, as a couple, who we are as people um, that we still keep in touch with. So, I mean, f football wise, the success wasn't there, you know, that I dreamed of when I got drafted there and things that I wanted to bring that city. Um, but personally and, and as a family, we, you know, grew and succeeded a lot. I think it would probably be like the most important chapter was in Michigan for us. I mean, we had all four of our kids there. We became a family there. Um, I had my brain surgery there. Yeah. We had a lot of things happening. Now, career-wise for him, it wasn't, you know, what we wanted it to be, but I think it, I think it's the most important chapter sure. that we've been through in our lives was in Michigan mm -hmm. for those 12 years. You mentioned the brain surgery. I, I want to go back to when you realized, okay, something is wrong with my health. Um, and when you first started talking to Matthew and kind of letting him in, that maybe you're not feeling like you should. Yeah, I mean, I feel like as most moms do, they put themselves on the back burner and, and your health comes last. And I kind of started realizing it 
Um, I was teaching my girls how to do a front roll. Obviously, you know, I cheered at Georgia. Um, but, and I was getting super dizzy teaching them how to do this easy thing that I've been doing my whole life. Um, I remember looking at my mom saying, I feel like I'm getting so old. I can't even do a front roll. And she was like, you're not even 30. Mm -hmm. What are you talking about? Um, and then, you know, I kind of started to tell Matthew about it a little bit. And the one, I think the one moment was um, when I was holding Hunter, our youngest at this point, I think she was like six months. Yep. And um, I felt myself losing my balance and going down and kind of like threw her to Matthew. And he looked at me and he was like, we've got to go get you checked. And that's when we, the first time I went to the ER yep. in Michigan. Matthew, what's going through your mind as something like that is happening to uh, your wife and you're just not sure? Yeah, I was scared, you know. Um, I'm trying to stay positive and think, you know, okay, maybe there's some inner ear or something where you can go get some, you know, antivert or vertigo medicine to try and help you feel better, you know. And, and uh, actually the first person I feel like that came to my head, this is so strange, I don't even know if I've ever told you this, but like Jason Day, mm -hmm. was a golfer that struggled with vertigo and was like, like going down to a knee on the on the golf course and I was like okay hopefully it's just something like that and we can get some medicine and go and went to the ER and they gave you that stuff and and uh she was like not helping you know and uh we ended up flying out to California because we were gonna vacation out here and then um I don't even know was it a, a week later we did an MRI and then got the results I don't know a little bit after that but it was it was scary um you know she's a tough a tough girl, and I've known that for a long time. So something like that was getting to her, scaring her a little bit. I knew we needed to get it, you know, checked out. What were the results of the MRI? Uh, I had a acoustic neuroma, which um, when we went in, again, like, they just told us we needed to go get the MRI looked at. And we, I don't even think we really thought anything of that. But then we were sitting in the Neuro Institute at UCLA, actually around the corner here, and... Um, I remember seeing a girl with uh, these staples all the way back down her head, behind her ear, um, and kind of like, oh man, I am uh, got a little nervous. And then when we walked in, they pulled up my MRI and just kind of said, all right, well, here's what you're dealing with and here are some options. Um, I think I blacked out after I saw it and didn't hear anything. Um, but yeah, then, I don't know. It was a moment, a life-changing moment um, and I think I, you always go through these big moments and try to, out, try to come out the other side um, stronger, and that's, that's what we tried to do as, for me as an individual, but for us as a couple and a family and everything, just kind of use it and make it stronger. So yeah. that's what we tried to do. What was your reaction to knowing that your, your wife has to have brain surgery? Yeah, I mean, the, I think the strangest thing, not the strangest, but one of the toughest things with what she had going on was you go to three different doctors, you're gonna get maybe three different opinions on what to do. You can radiate it, you can leave it, you can hope it doesn't grow, you can take it out, and there's just all these variables, and it was tough, um, you know, to figure out what the right thing to do was, because um, each one of those decisions kind of had their pros and cons, mm -hmm. but in the end, you just trust her because she's the one that's walking around with it in her head, and um, she was like, I, I wanna get this thing out, and, um, those obviously had their own risks to it, you know, with the surgery, hearing loss, palsy, all that kind of stuff. Um, but then I was just trying to be in support mode and find the right person and find whoever we needed to talk to to make sure we were in the right hands. And, and luckily we found that person. And then after it was all, you know, done, just trying to be there as much as I could for her. I read that it said that you told Kelly that if it was good news, you were gonna stand on the right side of the bed. Right? Yeah. If it was bad news, you were going to stand on the left side of the bed. So when you wake up and your husband's on the right side. Yeah, I mean, waking up, it was a little bit of a blur. Um, but I did realize that he was on my right side. And I wish I could remember the first thing you said mm -hmm. to me. But again, with all the, you know, stuff. Mm -hmm. Do you remember? Uh, no, you were not in a good place. <laughs> mm -hmm. I was just trying to listen to whatever the nurse was trying to tell me to help you do. And I mean, seeing somebody that, um, you know, had issues going into the surgery, couldn't, you know, was feeling dizzy and so many things, but also um, in a lot of aspects, if you saw her that day before, you probably would not have noticed, you know, much of anything. And then you see her the night after and like, can't sit up and is screaming at me, telling me she thinks she's falling while she's laying in a bed. I mean, it's like, that was terrifying yeah. and uh, hard for me. So, um, yeah, it was a lot of, a lot of tough times, but um, something that made us stronger, which is, which is cool. Mm -hmm. 
you had to relearn how to walk. Yeah, I mean, it just, they wiped out my balance. So um, relearning, my brain had to just kind of figure out what it was gonna rely on. Um, it's kind of a crazy thing. They, they wipe out one side and all of a sudden your brain's being taught just to rely on your left side. Um, so it was a process, but um, again, I had him, I had a ton of support. Um, and when you have kids, you're gonna fight even harder to get back sooner. So um, that's just what we did. And I, I relied on him a bunch. I mean, talk about caregiver, he, he had all my medications lined up. He had alarms for when I was taking all these medications, um, doing anything and everything to make sure I was okay. And finally I looked at him and I was like, you gotta go back to work. Like, I love you, but I know you're happiest at work, so you gotta go. Like, my mom's here, I'm good. You've, you've gotten me this far, I'll be okay, so. How on earth were you managing being the caretaker of your wife and then also, you know, the starting, the leader, the quarterback of an NFL franchise and like your wife was saying, going back to work and with your mind being at home, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, it was a, it was a challenge, but um, my, I had a little schedule that I knew what I was gonna do. I would wake up and go in and work out um, super early and then I would catch the team meeting and then when they all went to meetings, I would just go home. Um, and luckily I had coaches and everybody obviously that understood and was trying to support me. I was trying to learn Daryl Bevel's new offense too. So there were a lot of challenges, but um, when she was napping, I had time to study. Um, I do remember that. Like he, we blacked out our room because the light sensitivity. I remember like waking up and like rolling over, and he would be in his playbook, just sitting there. He's like, "You okay?" I'm like, "Uh huh." He's like, "All right." And I just pass out, wake back up, he'd be doing the same thing. I mean, so you just stayed there and learned, and I slept, mm -hmm. which is kind of great. <laughs> Looking back at it, yeah. <laughs> you mentioned that it. This was a life-changing moment for both of you. Mm -hmm. How have you changed since the brain surgery? Oh, I think. I mean those type of situations make you realize what's important in life. Um, relationships, the ones you share it with. Um, I tell them all the time, I try to remind them, success is awesome. Success on that field is great, but if you have no one to share it with, it's not even worth going through. Um, so I think that's what I learned. Like my family will always come first. Um, and I mean, like, I just feel like that's the motto I want to live by now. Cause I had a, I had a feeling at one point, I was like, what if I'm not here? What if I'm not here for him? What if I'm not here for my girls? Um, so after that surgery, I promised myself that I would always put them first and, and that's what I'm gonna live for is, is them. And, and that's, I mean, I think that's the biggest thing I took from it. Mm -hmm. How have you changed? Um, taught me a lot about, well, it didn't teach me, but it just showed me a lot of what I already knew about her, you know, and, um, I think the coolest thing for me as a dad is being able to raise four daughters and like there's no better example of like to be how to be tough and how to overcome challenges and stuff than look at your mom. You know, I mean, that's that's a pretty cool thing to be able to teach your kids. And it's like right in front of their face. They see it every day. Um, so that's that's the biggest thing for me that, that has come from it. Um, I've always known how tough she is and known how strong she is. Uh, that just kind of reinforced it in my in my mind. Um, but for me, I just appreciate the moments we you get. You know, I mean, those are the kind of moments in life that make you kind of check yourself. And you hate that sometimes it takes that, but sometimes it does. And and um, just happy that you know I still get to share those moments. So I can only imagine that perspective is something mm -hmm. that is changed or altered when you're going through mm -hmm. basically a, a life or death situation. Yeah. Would you say that that's fair? A hundred percent. I mean. Uh, I love playing football, I love doing what I do. Um, but in all reality, it takes a backseat to what's going on at my house and with Kelly and my kids. So um, it definitely helps you put those things into perspective. It's, like I said, you, you hate that it takes sometimes events like that to do it, but it does. And uh, I think we're better for it. So that's mm -hmm. a good thing. So after the surgery, that's a life altering moment mm -hmm. away from the field at home then you guys have a life altering moment in your professional career. Walk me through as a family, how you come to the decision that, okay, maybe my career will not end in Detroit. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's time for me to start a new career elsewhere. Yeah, um, it was hard. Um, when I was drafted there in 2009, all I ever wanted to do was have a Super Bowl parade down Woodward Avenue and bring the Lions a Super Bowl trophy. It's, went to work every day thinking about that, trying to do everything I could to help that happen didn't happen. Um, 
had some great times there, some great years, played with unbelievable teammates and for great coaches. Um, but I don't know, I, I just feel like it organically kind of came up and we talked and it wasn't like one sit down, it was kind of fluid as the season was going. Um, here's how I'm thinking, here's how I'm feeling. I feel like I have a lot left in the tank. I feel like I know where this organization is probably headed and, and how can I help them while also, you know, um, helping out our family and helping myself too. So um, I think it worked out great, but it was not an easy decision. It wasn't just one conversation. I mean, this is something that was going to be, you know, a huge change for me, per, you know, professionally, but a huge change for our family moving across the country, leaving a bunch of friends we've known for, you know, 10, 12 years. So it was something that uh, everybody needed to be on board with and agree with. And luckily, you know, she's a stud and, and was like, I'll go wherever you go and we'll make it work. As the matriarch of the family, uh, what was your reaction to getting to that moment where you're like, okay, we're going to do this. As a family, we're, we're leaving Detroit. Yeah. Um, Detroit will always have a massive place in our hearts. I mean, like we said, um, the people there are incredible and we grew up there and had a family there. But, um, you know, we talked about it and I think one of the main things I kept telling it or we discussed was, you know, this, this career is short. Um, this football life is short. And I, I truly, I told him, I was like, I just want you to have a shot. Um, and if you don't feel like you might get that here, maybe it's time we, we think about the alternatives. And I knew he is loyal and loyal to a fault sometimes. He, he was not um, ever gonna leave there unless he had a little, like someone that would truly support and, and, and not, I don't wanna say encourage, no. but, yeah. um, but just say, it's okay. Mm. It's okay that you're not gonna, do your whole, have your whole career here, that's gonna be okay. And if you wanna go somewhere else, we are right behind you. Mm -hmm. Wherever you wanna go, we will go. Um, and it could have taken us anywhere. Yeah. Um, and that was a scary thought, you know, we didn't know where we could have ended up. And we ended up here and although it is beautiful and it is awesome, it is far <laughs> from family, yes. which is tough. But um, you know what, it's given him the opportunity that he's dreamed of and worked so hard for his entire life. So mm -hmm. that's absolutely worth, you know, all the stress and the move cross country and all that, and leaving friends and family behind. Um, they'll still be friends and family mm -hmm. and we'll make new ones and, and we have. And so um, it was a big decision, but looking at it now, definitely the right one. And I think it would have been the right one regardless of, you know, where we ended up or what we were doing right now, playing or not playing. Mm -hmm. um, at least we gave it a shot. What I love about having you two together is kind of hearing the process behind what we see in the headlines. And so what I'm hearing, Matthew, is if Kelly's not there, what changes about your football career? What changes if you don't have someone that's incur not only encouraging, but saying, no matter what you choose, I'm going to be there with you? Yeah, I mean, going out and playing on Sundays is one thing, but, you know, thinking about your career and where you're going to go next and all these things, it's, it's, it's a lot to think about. It's hard for me to process all that and having her there to be a, just a sounding board and here's what I'm thinking, here's what I know she's given me honest, loving feedback of what she thinks and sees and, and um, you know, I definitely would, I, mean, I don't definitely, but I'd probably still be there, you know, and, and I would probably, um, you know, I just would have missed out on some opportunities to do what I'm getting to do right now, which is amazing. Like she said, I mean, there was no foregone conclusion where we were going to be, I had no clue. So that was a, you know, a, a scary thing too, but uh, just so happy to be where we are and, and couldn't have done it, you know, without the support of her and the rest of my kiddos and everything, so. Flash forward to Cabo about a year ago. You guys were together. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're on a trip, you're expecting mm -hmm. to be on vacation, Kelly. Yeah. Like, you're probably excited about that. I was uh, very excited. <laughs> you're getting away from football. That's why, that's what you decided. Not so fast. Yeah. And football came with you to Cabo. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, but exactly. Walk me through when, when you first realized that, okay, this trip might not just be a vacation. Yeah, so we, we tried, we, I looked at him, I knew he was stressed out because again, when he, he's been, do, been doing it for 12 years, knew where he was going to be when, you know, OTAs picked back up. And for the first time ever, he was not going to, he didn't know. So I looked at him and I could tell the stress level was getting a little crazy. And I was like, let's just get, let's just go. Let's go somewhere. Let's leave our kids for a little bit. Let's spend a few days at a beach, remote, away from everything. Um, and we tried to go to the Bahamas and some hurricane had hit or something. We tried to get a couple different places and 
uh, this Cabo Chileno Bay got back and was like, we have a spot for you. Um, so we went there and lo and behold, we walked to the pool and there's uh, Wit, right? Yeah, Wit and Sean. And I immediately was like, that's a big dude. It's like, there's no, that's a football player. It's a football player. We can get away, can't even get away. Um, and we actually had some mutual friends, Clint Bowling, who's a Georgia boy too. Um, so we got to know them, which was awesome. And then Sean McVay came around the corner and we got to know him a little bit. And then I really realized that the, they started talking football immediately. And I was like, all right, well, I guess I'll just go to the bar. <laughs> See you guys later. I'll just spend it by myself. I don't know. Um, and yeah, so it quickly turned into um, a little love fest between the three of them, I guess. <laughs> Still is, in a way. Yeah. <laughs> what was the initial meeting like when, when you first walk up? And it sounds like it was an, an, an immediate, you know, magnetism. That was yeah, I mean, you guys. yeah, I, um, I'd known Wit just a little bit. And so it was cool getting to talk to him. And then Sean came around a little bit after that and uh, just getting to talk to him. He's obviously a dynamic personality. I've met him a few times just kind of, um, you know, after games. There's a lot of, I had a lot of, you know, admiration and appreciation for how he coached and, and, um, you know, he was always shaking my hand after games too when I saw him. So I knew who he was. I knew a little bit from her brother played against him in high school. So it's this weird long, dynamic, weird yeah. dynamic, long, long backstory to it. But um, yeah, I mean, you know, we just started talking a little bit of football and and bouncing, you know, plays in their season and my season off of each other. Started talking. He's realizing that I'm remembering a lot of these plays and talking the same language that he is and. Uh, Finishing each other's sentences. Yeah, it was, the first five minutes they met each other. It's it was, like, I mean, y'all are more made to be than I am. <laughs> we are. <laughs> no, I mean it's it was cool. It was really fun to get to know him and and uh, that whole crew. So it was, uh, I don't know. I mean, I feel like people don't believe it, but it's just a crazy story. And uh, it's you know why we're here today. And and um, I'm happy it happened. I mean, shoot, it was uh, you know a big time moment for our family. And I mean, we flew down there full intention to be flying back to Detroit and figuring out what was next, and we ended up having to fly to Los Angeles to start looking at schools for our kids. I mean, it was a whirlwind, 48, 72 hours, however long it was. It sounds like a football honeymoon to me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like nonstop, yeah. yeah. It was not fun for the ladies, I'm sure. Yeah, we found our fun, fun. Yeah. <laughs> He'd said that uh, he was kind of watching you, like he was actually like observing who you were as not only a person player and he could see that you were recalling plays and things like that, but that he wanted to work with you. Mm -hmm. Were you observing Sean McVay in the same way? Just wondering if you really did want to work with him. Yeah, I mean, definitely that's part of it, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, this isn't just uh, you call football plays, I run football plays. You know, I knew that um, I was looking for somebody I could collaborate with and I think he was doing the same. And uh, I had an awesome time talking football with him. I had an awesome time talking other stuff too, mm -hmm. you know, and that's just as important. Um, so it was a, a crazy coincidence that we ended up and, and got to um, spend that much time together and talk to each other and get to know each other, both about football and not. And uh, I think that helped solidify probably in his mind, and I know in mine too, um, you know, that if I got that opportunity, how excited I would be about it. Mm -hmm. You guys are kind of close in age. Yeah. <laughs> Sean says it's not, you guys can challenge each other, so yeah. you can go at each other, yeah. but you can collaborate. I mean, how would you describe the relationship and the way that it works? It's unlike any other one I've had with a coach before. Um, in so many ways, it's, uh, I have so much, you know, I had, I had a lot of respect for him, for what he does, um, you know, as a football mind and all that before I got to play for him. I mean, that has just, grown exponentially. I mean, he's an unbelievable football coach and not only in X's and O's, but how he motivates our team and gets our guys going and how he carries himself is for a guy that's, I think he just turned 36, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, uh, it's pretty unbelievable. So uh, I have a ton of, ton of respect for him in that way. Um, but at the same time, we, you know, we can get after each other a little bit and, uh, and like, and be pissed in the moment and laugh about it 10 minutes later, which is awesome and a lot of fun. He's brought that probably out of me and made me feel comfortable enough to be able to do that to a coach where in a lot of other instances, I probably wouldn't open my mouth and I would just, you know, take it with a grain of salt and keep it moving. But um, he encourages that for me and, and um, he's brought that out of me a little bit. And uh, I think he, he and I have a great relationship. It's probably unique to us and how we go about our business, but um, it's one that I love and I, I have a blast playing for him. Mm -hmm. 
okay, I have this crazy like vision of Matthew's first day with the Rams and like you're preparing his lunch and like, okay, honey, like, okay, I know you don't know where your locker is, yeah. but you're gonna figure it out. Can we just go back to the first day that you came to the facility, what you're saying to him, just kind of like, for 12 years you were in one place and then all of a sudden everything has changed and you've moved across the country. What was that like for you guys as a family? I mean, for me, coming in here was, Daunting. I was, you know, I knew everybody in Detroit. I knew the equipment guy, I knew the guy that cut the grass, I knew the guy that did everything and felt so comfortable talking to them about their lives and what was going on. Um, and then I'm walking into a place and I know like five teammates maybe and uh, nobody else. And so that to me, being the quarterback of a team is such a huge part of that role is being able to connect with everybody in the building and, and I want that and want to be able to do that. and. Uh, that takes time. You can't just walk in and fake that. I can't memorize somebody's name on a piece of paper, see their face and go, hey, so-and-so, it's great to see you. You know, I'm at, you know, it, it just needs to happen organically and that's just kind of how I work. Um, so I just knew it was going to take time, but there were some uncomfortable days where I'm trying to remember people and get to know people as best I can and, and um, that's teammates included. So um, it kind of brought a new, it invigorated me a little bit and I'm like, hey, you know, this is uncomfortable, but that's okay. And, uh, you know, just go out there and give it your best shot. And, and uh, it's, it's worked out. <laughs> what was your advice during the uncomfortable times for him? Oh, gosh. <laughs> I don't know if I gave much advice. Probably just be me because, yeah. you know, I mean, that's the only thing you can do is just try to be as comfortable as you can in your own skin and go out there and be who you are and, and uh, the rest will take care of itself. That's what I do, I do me. feel like you came home, like, a little nervous is the fact of, like, are they gonna like me kind of situation? Sure, of and I mean, it is. And I and I told him just what I told y'all earlier. Um, you meet him, you get to know him. It's hard. It's hard not to like him. I mean, there's moments where you're not gonna like him, <laughs> but it's it's hard not to. So I do think I was just like, just be yourself, be your funny, witty. I mean, maybe hold back like the super witty comments that might hurt someone's feelings until you really know them. <laughs> but um, yeah, just again, just. Do you, and, and it'll all be good, mm -hmm. yeah. What do you feel like uh, was the point maybe in this season, it could have been preseason at any point, where you're like, okay, this feels like home. Like there's usually a turning point mm -hmm. um, in a story like this. What yeah, would you, you know, say the turning point I, was? I think for me, um, we go down to UC Irvine for training camp for the first couple of weeks, and then when we came back here to kind of finish up training camp, I was like, coming back to this building, I was like, okay, this feels familiar. Because UCI was different for me, you know, I never had training camp there. It was feeling that out as well. And then we came back here and I was like, all right, I feel really comfortable, I feel good. And then going into that first game, I mean, I was confident in what we were gonna be able to do, but there's a lot of unknowns and you just never know how it's gonna go. And, uh, a you lot know, of pressure. and a lot of pressure. I mean, like, yeah, I mean, you know, I was, we've been playing under that all year, mm -hmm. not worried about that, but it was just like a, uh, it was great to, to have a great first game like we did as a team and ha take that confidence, kind of let it, you know, let it build. Mm -hmm. Now that we know that the season ends in Super Bowl 56, can we go back to the beginning and talk about pressure and expectation? Because I don't think usually a quarterback shows up at a team and day one, the expectation is mm -hmm. make it to the Super Bowl mm -hmm. <laughs> with all the assets that are on the team. Yep. Describe what that was like day in, day out for you. Yeah, um, that's something that if you look at it in, you know, the big picture early is, is overwhelming, you know, and, and I just knew I had so many things to learn in this offense, so many people to learn, so many things to learn about this place that if I thought about that every day, I'd be, there's no way I'd be able to keep up with the rest of it. So, um, you know, I have a lot of respect for what Jerry was able to do here. I know this was a Super Bowl team a couple years ago. So it's like, you know, the expectations are going to be high and that's awesome because we have good players on the team and a great coach and all that. Um, that being said, you know, I def you know, definitely hear it, you know, I mean, I'm not immune to what's going on and flipping ESPN on and hearing it every other second or whatever or it is. Or NBC. Or NBC. Sorry about that. <laughs> flipping on the sports channels. My bad. You're good. But I'm not like, yeah, I'm not immune to hearing it, you know. Yeah. And um, so, uh, you know, I think the biggest thing is I just relied on my teammates. Um, so many, so many great guys on our team, so many great players. If I just rely on those guys and trust myself that it was going to be, you know, where we wanted it to be. Mm -hmm. I go back to, I was looking at the schedule and just the month of November was tough. Mm -hmm. No wins during that month. What did you learn about yourself, the team, and how did you get through that? Yeah, I mean, I think for me personally, I probably relied on a whole lot of tough months I had in Detroit, you know, and knew that, you know, 
there's there's ways out of these things. You got to just get back to it and keep working and trust your process and know that football's an imperfect game and you're going to have rough spots, rough games, maybe a rough few games in a row. Um, but sh- all you got to do is just continue that process, continue to try to learn about yourself and your teammates. I learned that I have a really resilient group of guys in that locker room. Um, and I think that's kind of shown itself as we progress throughout the season. Not only how we were able to turn around and win there, but even in game, you know, having struggles, whether it be offense, defense, special teams, and finding ways to just make plays to help us win the game. Uh, that's what it's all about. And that's, you know, probably one of the big reasons we're sitting here today. I don't think I know a quarterback that's almost better at turning the page, I feel like, than you. Maybe you can give us some insight on that, Kelly. I mean, I think like compartmentalizing yeah. stuff. One of the, be- the best I know at it. Um, we were laughing the other night. We win the NFC uh, championship, and this dude comes home. I'm on this, like, high. I can't go to sleep. And he's like, all right, we won. I'm going to go to bed. I mean, compartmental, like, he, and he out cold within five minutes. Um, but even through Detroit, um, you know, there were some rough times through Detroit. You know, he, he does an incredible job of leaving whatever he's going through when it comes to um, his work at work. And that's something, I think that was learned. Um, And because he did go through what he went through in Michigan, that month of November here, I don't even remember, Mm. because I don't recall a difference in him. Um, So that month, I guess, kind of just went over my head. Um, But he is incredible at it. Even the wins, I mean, like he comes home, he's like, that was awesome. Let's start on the next one. Um, but he does a good job of, you know, setting aside family time when he's home, it's family. When he's at work, it's work. Um, I, I mean, I can't get a hold of him when he's at work. So, like, he really does combine. <laughs> Everyone is cut off from wherever, you know, Sean can't call while he's at home and I can't call while he's at work. So um, one of the best to do it, and I think, I, I think that's why, to be totally honest, you're such a good competitor and you're such a good dad and you're such a good husband because you are able to, you know, compartmentalize it all. So it's pretty impressive. Mm-hmm. Thank you. That's good, that's good <laughs> praise there. I love it. Uh, okay, I want to go back to the divisional round, Tampa. Mm-hmm. Going on the road and, y- you know, like, obviously with every single game, you're getting one step closer to the Super Bowl and the pressure that is there. And you've had situations where you've had to play from behind. You've had situations where you have to come back from mistakes. But... You, you stepping on the field with 42 seconds left and knowing that you can seal the game, mm-hmm. those are the opportunities that you said you wanted yeah, when you what, took the job. Like, describe what it's like to live that moment out. Oh, it's awesome. It's what you live for. If, I mean, as a quarterback, it's what you live for. You know, a chance to go help your team, you know, move on in this case, you know, and, and win, a, win a big game, move on to the next round. Uh, I feel like I've had those opportunities a lot in Detroit to win those football games. This one just happened to you know, be on a national stage in a, in a playoff game that is just means a lot. And uh, that was so much fun to be able to do that for our team. Um, there were so many guys that had such a huge part in that. Um, you know, as a quarterback, you get the credit for a win or a comeback or whatever it is. But, I mean, it takes so many people to get that thing done and, and uh, so many guys working together, which is my favorite part. Like, uh, you know, it's cool to make a play here or there. But, like, if I do one thing and this guy doesn't do his job, I mean, it just doesn't work. So, um There's no better feeling as a quarterback than leading those guys and having that group come together and make those plays to win the game. Um, That was a huge moment, one I'll never, you know, forget. Uh, And, you know, probably it's got to be the top of the list of, you know, favorite comebacks I've had that um, on the road in a tough environment against, you know, probably the best quarterback to ever play the game. Um, To get that win was was awesome. I was going to say the pass to Cooper. Where does that rank on your list of plays? It's up there. I mean... For importance, I mean, it's way up there, um, you know, for what it, what it meant in the game, in the season, yep. um, all of it. Uh, it's way up there, and no better guy to throw it to than that guy, and, and so happy and have so much trust in him that he's going out there and makes that play, and that's not an easy catch. Um, that's not a route that a lot of guys would even probably look back for, to be honest with you, and, and uh, he just knew, and and um, that's, that's the kind of teammate and the kind of player he is. All right, let's go to the NFC Championship game. Down 10, mm-hmm. going in the fourth quarter. Kelly, you were doing what in the stands? I mean, I, I, don't, I might have thrown <laughs> up at this point. Um, no, you know what? Again, I, we always say where we sit, people start cheering when we're up 17-0 at halftime. I'm like, 
don't do that because for some reason this man loves and it's not just him obviously but it's always close um so when we were down 10 you know i have so much confidence in him in a way i i feel almost better when we're down um because i feel like they're gonna put it in his hands and and let him go to work and um and that's kind of what they did and i remember looking at marvin jones who um played with Matthew for five or six years and he was sitting with us and he was like, oh no, this is what nine does. <laughs> Give him the ball, this is what nine does. This is right where we want to be. And I was looking at him, I was like, are we? Are we right where we want to be? Um, but he was completely right. So I think, I mean, I think we were okay where we were sitting. We we have confidence in him and um, in that team. I mean, the team's incredible. Mm -hmm. So yep. complete confidence. And, you know, to go out and beat San Fran, I, I knew it'd be important to all of them. Mm -hmm. um, so I knew it was gonna, everyone was gonna give it everything they had, which they did, it was yep. awesome. This is what Nine does. Yeah. <laughs> Nine managed to do it. <laughs> A one moment that goes viral immediately afterwards is the hug that you guys shared. Just describe what that moment meant, because I think the reason so many people were attached to it is because it was so genuine and real, and it, it, it seemed like it meant a lot of things. What did it mean to you? Yeah, I mean, a lot. Um, we've been through a lot together both on the field, off the field, huge changes in the last 365 days. There was whatever it was a year ago to the day on that Sunday that, you know, it came out that we were going to be traded. And, and uh, I don't know, it was a roller coaster of a year for, for all of us. And um, I was just happy to share that moment with her and was so happy that she was, you know, able to get down on the field and and uh, give me a hug. I mean, it was, it was awesome. It was, that was kind of a blur of an 30 minutes or an hour or whatever it was after the after the game I was you know just trying to soak it all in at the same time understand there's a little bit more out there to do and uh but at the same time really just enjoy with her with my teammates with everybody that uh you know we're gonna have a chance to play for what everybody dreams about playing for mm -hmm. what about that moment for you um I think you know I've watched this man prepare as much I mean like prepare, study, work as hard as you can, even in the moments in Detroit where there was really nothing to fight for anymore. You know, you're out of the playoffs, but he's sitting there working as hard as he can for his teammates, for that organization, for the fans, for the city. Um, and to come here and for him to get a shot at that Super Bowl, um, I just think I, I can't, I can't, I honestly, it's hard for me to put into words what I was feeling. I was just so excited, proud, um, you know, I know all NFL players work incredibly hard. I know all quarterbacks study a ton, um, but obviously I witnessed him and I'm a little biased. Mm -hmm. So I think he deserves it more than anybody. Mm -hmm. um, so that's when I hugged him. I, I don't even, I don't know if we said much. Mm -hmm. um, I think I just said, I'm so proud of you and um, you did it. Like let's, and again, in the back of my mind thinking, he did this, but you know there is still more to happen, mm -hmm. and and it, the final goal is not reached yet. So, um, but yeah, we just—I don't know—I lost it. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> My dad was like, "I don't think I've seen you jump that high in a very long time." <laughs> still got it, Dad. No, don't do that. Still got those abs, you know. <laughs> I think to everyone who's on the outside, it's like, oh, you can't write a better story than this. You show up, you know, the first season that you're a Ram, you take them to the Super Bowl in L.A but not everyone is really understanding what you've been through to get here. So just to describe the journey that you've been on, what would you say it has been? Like, what are you gonna re be remembering when the lights hit your helmet and you run out on SoFi for Super Bowl 56? Mm. Yeah. Um, so many years playing this game, you know, um, from being in the fourth grade on and, and learning this game, loving this game. So many people that have helped me get here my dad, coaches, whoever it is. I mean, I'm sure I'll be thinking about all that. Um, and then, you know, the times I spent in Detroit too. You know, I think they've helped mold me into the person and the player and the leader and the quarterback that I am, um, both the good times and the bad. You know, learning to, you know, play through stuff when you're out of a playoff hunt and what that means to the team, what that means to the guys and, and uh, how you can affect the team and the mindset of a team. Um, I'm hoping that, you know, rubs off on our guys here and we, um, and we get it done. But I, I'm just going to be very thankful for all the experiences this game has given to me, both on and off the field. Um, 
but at the same time, we'll be locked in trying to get a dub. So uh, I'm going to be thinking about that, too. So it's it's going to be a, a balance of emotions, but at the same time, once the ball snapped, it's it's time to go win a game. What about you, Kelly? Oof. I know I'm probably going to get sick multiple times before that game. <laughs> but, um, no, I'm just – I'm excited for him. It's it's his moment. It's this team's moment, and I'll be up there praying and cheering as loud as I can. So I can't wait for it, though. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> and lastly, what does it mean to to be able to celebrate this moment in the city, bringing the Super Bowl to the city, yeah. and being able to to have the Rams playing in the game? That's crazy. You know, it's it's unbelievable. Um, you know, it hadn't happened for however many years, and then last year Tom did it in Tampa, and. You know, hopefully we have the opportunity to get it done and, and do it again here in L.A. Um, you know, that was part of the storyline at the beginning of the season and some of the things that, uh, you know, you don't want somebody else playing in the Super Bowl in your in your house. And so uh, it was uh, – it's an awesome opportunity. It's something that I know not only myself but our whole team, our whole community is super fired up about. And, um, you know, hopefully we can, uh, we can bring it home and make everybody proud. Big parade. Big parade. <laughs> Last question, what is the best college football team in the nation? <laughs> Georgia <Good> Bulldogs. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.